there, travelers, and welcome back to the end of Dime. I am a very nostalgic person. I enjoy looking back on my past, on the simpler days long gone before me. I like to go outside and feel the wind against my face, because it often takes my brain backward in time to a joyful moment where the breeze may have perhaps been moving the same way. I personally believe that nostalgia is an incredibly powerful emotion, because it is often when thinking about the moments in our life that brought us joy that we revert back to our most passionate, and therefore our most imaginative, our most creatively driven, and our most adventurous. Video games as a genre seem to outweigh all others when it comes to reminiscing about our past. And it makes sense given the fact that they are an intimate experience, the likes of which we actually had control over, rather than something else like a movie or a book where we are only an audience. The purpose of this brand new series of mine isn't necessarily to teach you anything new, to analyze a game or to make some sort of point, but rather to trigger emotion. The sort that I truly hope brings a smile to your face. That's what we're going to be doing in this new segment. You've heard of Let's Plays? Well, this is a Let's Reminisce. Let's travel back in time, revert to our younger selves, and share some memories. I'll go first, with a game that I feel embodies the entire essence of video game nostalgia. Donkey Kong Country. <laughs> When it comes to nostalgic video games, Donkey Kong Country is honestly the immediate title that pops into my head. It feels like a series that was created to spur memories. It's difficult to explain exactly why, but I think many will agree that upon hearing any of its melodic themes, you are transported back to the SNES era itself. And when playing this game, it truly feels as if life for a moment becomes a whole lot simpler. The Donkey Kong Country series has a very special place in my heart. I'm someone who actually began bawling my eyes out when Nintendo announced the return of the series in E3 of 2009. There's just something about it. It always feels like it has my back. I feel so creatively driven when I think about it. And I always find that it comes at a crucial moment in my life to remind me that a fictional world can truly help us escape from life's hardships. But it actually goes beyond that. For you see, friends, Donkey Kong Country was actually my first video game. The first one I ever played. And there's a story behind it. When I was a kid, my family didn't have much money, and therefore we never got an NES. My brother was super into video games at the time, so he eventually saved up to buy himself its successor, the almighty Super Nintendo Entertainment System. Now, up until that point, I had gone through my younger years watching people play video games rather than trying them myself. In short, it was because I was too intimidated. People always seemed to make it look easier than it actually was. Of course, I had no way of knowing that for sure yet, but I felt I could never possibly compare. And so, I settled for being more of an observer. Right off the bat, they fascinated me. I knew that unlike my cousins and my brother, who seemed to only play video games for challenge and distraction, there was something more to it within me. I fell in love with the characters, the worlds, the look and feel of the games, and of course, the music. My brother was my entryway to so many video game worlds. I would beg him to start up a game so I could watch him play, to which he'd usually oblige. Though he picked on me a lot and was a large reason why I was so intimidated in the first place, I felt a bond between us each time he'd play. I'd watch game after game, until one day, he brought home with him a true gem, Donkey Kong Country. To say that no game had compared until then would be an understatement. I was glued to the screen every time he played this one. I was so immersed in its lush and vibrant world, its jamming soundtrack, its colorful cast of characters. 
I began to watch my brother play the game so much that something interesting started to happen. I had noticed that with this one, not only was I an observer, I was starting to learn. I was starting to understand the basics of its levels, the timings of its jumps, the right time to do something and the wrong. And it was on one fateful night that all of that learning would pay off. My brother had gotten to the end of the game, the iconic climactic battle against King K. Rule aboard his pirate ship. Try as he might, my brother simply could not take him down. He must have tried 50 times. I was cheering him on while simultaneously observing the crocodile's movements. He was beginning to get very, very frustrated each time he'd fail. About 90 minutes through his attempt, my dad called my brother down to take out the trash. My brother paused the game and left to go aid my dad. And there I was, sitting alone in a room with nothing but a vacant SNES controller and the final boss of Donkey Kong Country calling out to me. I went for it. It only took a few tries, and to my amazement, it happened. I sent the crocodile down to the gallows, and the credits began to roll. It was in that very moment I knew video games would forever be a part of my life. So yeah, the game definitely means a lot to me. I'm sure everyone has their own memory of this SNES classic. In my opinion, Donkey Kong Country is almost like a spiritual game. There's something about this game that just creeps into your soul when you play it. Dare I say it, the game feels nostalgic even to people who have never played it before. And that's probably because it feels like such a byproduct of its time. It's simple yet elegant. The game is compact with a large variety of levels, each different from the last. One minute you're climbing atop treetops. The next you're riding through a rickety rail on a minecart. Then you're swimming underwater, firing yourself through shooting barrels, trying to find your way with the lights off, playing stop-go with your enemies, and trying to keep an elevator from losing fuel. It's a perfect example of just how clever and heartfully crafted SNES titles were. Developers put everything they had into those sorts of games, and being forced to overcome technical limitations made the games even more charming. I also love how each character and enemy feels so in tune with its world. Unlike something like Mario, where the elements often feel like a mix of ideas thrown into a blender, every character and enemy in Donkey Kong Country feels consistent because, well, there are all the sorts of stuff you'd actually find in a jungle. It gives the entire game this beautiful consistency and helps immerse you in the world so beautifully. I always felt that the use of coloring also plays a huge role. Donkey Kong Country is filled with a beautiful mix of intense hues and spectrums, and each encapsulates the emotions of each level super well. I mean, how can you not feel a sense of beautiful melancholy looking at a sunset like that? And of course, I simply cannot go without mentioning perhaps its strongest asset of all. I myself don't know too much about music and what makes it tick, but to my mind, David Weiss's soundtrack here is one of pure beauty. Donkey Kong Country takes place in a jungle, and each of its themes feels so well suited to that. The outside world, the wild so to speak, is a place of freedom and adventure, a place of intense emotion and wonderment. And that's everything you get in tracks like Life in the Mines and Aquatic Ambience. Playing this game reminds me of a simpler time. A time when there was no internet or cell phones. When sitting down with a game meant that you and it were all that existed. When discovering the secrets and hidden treasures of a game was a collaborative experience. One in which we shared everything with our close friends of a time when playing video games was like your reward for all your hard work. That of course being school at the time. Don't get me wrong, I love a ton of modern games, and I don't think that the classics were the only, well, classics. But there's just something so unique about the old era. Something so wonderfully beautiful that we'll never have back. 
You can't tell me you play Donkey Kong Country and don't for even a second feel as though you're in touch with nature itself. It's a transcendent experience, at least in my opinion. Donkey Kong Country has its flaws. There is no doubt about that. But I simply cannot understate just how beautiful it can be at times. It means so much to me, and I really hope that this trip down memory lane helps explain why. Do you have any fond memories of the game, or the series as a whole? The goal of this series is to really trigger our nostalgic senses and look back on our memories. I hope that I've helped a little bit with that. What game will be next? I'm not sure yet, but I'm excited to continue this series. I hope you enjoyed.